Taiwan is gearing up for war with China. These aren't soldiers, but civilians learning how to defend their country. Taiwan is self-ruled, but Beijing believes it's part of China and says it'll take the island using force if necessary. Across the nation, preppers are training to resist an invasion. But are they really a match for the world's biggest military, a force that outnumbers Taiwan's 12 to 1? If China invaded, would you fight? Yeah, of course. Democratic Taiwan has never been ruled by China. But many now believe the threat of an invasion has reached critical levels. A lot of Taiwan civilians feel they need to get ready in case there is a war with China. I'm on my way to meet a group of them here in one of the country's biggest cities, Taichung. They are the preppers. Hi there. Morning. Hi, how are Morning. you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? Good. So, uh, you got all your kit? Yeah. You got a tourniquet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe is a nurse <laughs> who started this training just two months ago. <laughs> At informal schools like this across the country, more and more people are spending their time and money learning how to use weapons defensively. In this makeshift basement firing range, all the weapons are replicas that shoot plastic pellets. Gun ownership for civilians is illegal in Taiwan. The decision to learn to use a weapon is still quite controversial here. Joe says she's thought hard about it. When you do this, when you actually do the shooting, how does it make you feel? Uh, uh, how if China invaded, would you fight? Yeah, of course. 当然, this is closed quarters battle or CQB training. The idea is to hold a position and check the building for enemy fighters. In Taiwan's dense cities, if an attack happens, it would likely be urban warfare like this. Joe's focus is on using her first aid skills to support the army behind the front line. She fears the country's hospitals would be overwhelmed in a war. Okay. Uh, Some estimates say a war with China could cost 10,000 lives in the first few days alone. Civilians here want to learn how to deal with a massive casualty situation. It's coming up to 8 o'clock, most people have finished work, and Central Park here in Taichung is deserted. 
except for Jo and her group of preppers, who come here for what they call self-training, where they each share the skills that they have. Across the country, there's a growing movement of groups like Joe's. An estimated 1.6 million of Taiwan's 23 million people have done some form of civil defence training. Tonight's exercise is a simulated enemy attack. Joe and her wife, Afra, train together every Friday. The delivery may be dramatic, but the intent is serious. We've all seen in America the preppers preparing for doomsday, and they are kind of thought of often as sort of quite eccentric. Is your group different to that? Do you think enough people in Taiwan are doing this? Yes, you the rescue mission ends with the casualties carried to safety. And these propaganda videos of real life military exercises released by China's armed forces show why people are worried. Beijing's multi-day drills demonstrate how it would annex Taiwan entirely, using live fire exercises, fighter jets, naval deployments and ballistic missile launches across the Taiwan Strait. The intimidation tactics have a clear message. Don't begin to think you can resist. To understand Beijing's fixation with taking Taiwan, Kinmen Island, just two miles from mainland China, is a good place to start. This was once the front line of a war with China. Messages of peace are still broadcast across the water to Xiamen. After losing to the communists in a brutal civil war, the nationalists fled to Taiwan in 1949, creating the Republic of China. Kinmen was the battleground. Over 6,000 people died fighting for the island. The nationalists kept it, but Beijing has claimed Taiwan as its territory ever since. Today, the shell damage and propaganda are kitsch tourist attractions. But for residents like Maestro Wu, war is still within living memory. Oh, oh. Oh. Nice to see you. When you were a boy, where were the bombs landing? How do you feel about the Chinese people? What is their relationship to you? At his workshop, Maestro Wu makes knives from old shell cases. And there's no shortage of material to work with. Over a million of these landed here. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, still warm. Like many people on Kinmen, Maestro Wu wants to keep the peace, even if that means negotiating with China. Some people here, they look at what happened in Ukraine and they see the Ukrainians fighting the Russians and they say this would be the same for Taiwan and Taiwan should fight China if that were to happen. 
What do you think of that? Oh, I think is actually the most well-known political activist is how to make the danger make the danger make the peace. Oh, don't be like this. Because first, Taiwan itself is just a small island, so if you hit Taiwan, the whole Taiwan is going to be destroyed. What do you say to those people who think you're too tall? What do you say to those people who think your talk of Political solutions is naive, and that China is an evil country that needs to be confronted. 到目前为止，从我我们我小时候到现在，我还没有看过他去侵略别的国家，到别的国家去打仗。所以在我们看来，觉得说这些都是只是一个，很多都是一个假设。Across the water from Kinmen, the bright lights of Xiamen may seem more photo opportunity than threat. But looking at Taipei Harbour on the main island, Taiwan's vulnerability is obvious. The Taiwan Strait is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes and Taiwan's lifeline. China could seal off this island nation and force it to negotiate or surrender. In a suburban tower block near the harbour, I meet another prepper, Charles Chi, who's worried about a blockade. Hello. Hi, Hello, Charles. Morning. Nice Good. to see you. Good morning. Good. Thank you. Good. So this is home. Yes. And this is all your supplies, is it? Yes. So you've got everything you need? Yes. This is my, my supplies. Customer suit. Tonicate. And the combat goals. This is my battery box, candle. Charles is a captain in the army. He'd be part of Taiwan's official military response. But despite this, he's preparing for the worst. So this is not about fighting. This is about surviving. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a point. The job of the government yeah. is to look after the people. Yeah. But you're saying, no, you must look after yourself. When the... Uh, uh, disaster or warfare, the government will, will shut down. Civil breakdown? Yeah, civil breakdown. Energy. There is so much yeah. kit, you can't ever forget it, can you? It's like you're living in a, in a bunker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the prepare, you know. That, that, yeah, I, I, I want and I like it. Taiwan only has to look to Hong Kong to see what China can do to its democracy. Beijing promised to respect one country, two systems there, but ended up suppressing free speech, violently cracking down on protests, imprisoning pro-democracy activists, and squashing the umbrella revolution. Most of this is that we stand with Hong Kong and for freedom, fight for freedom. Joe has taken me to see Tai Chung's Lenin Wall. Covered in messages of support for Hong Kong and Ukraine, this kind of expression of free speech would be banned in China. Hi, Casey. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Casey is a Hong Konger, an artist and activist. You were in the protests, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I find a poster of me Really? In what, this here? tunnel? Yeah. Where? Over there. Casey met Joe at her training group. That's me right there. He's now living in Taiwan in self-declared exile. The red giant is coming. We've got to be united and fight against this big adversary. But isn't, isn't the fact that you're here yes. the proof that you can't fight? Yes. True. You know, the, the, the giant is much, much bigger. The people of Hong Kong didn't have the army, we didn't have guns, we didn't have tanks and missiles and high mass and America. But we still rise, millions and two millions of us, with our bare body. So it's not about winning. It's about how to fall down gracefully so that other city states nearby can wake up. But do, do you feel that Taiwan could win in a fight? If we are, we are, uh together enough, we are get together enough, Taiwan people, even we are not win, but we are not lose. That sounds really good. 
not losing. Yeah. Because I think sometimes it's not about winning yeah, yeah. or losing. It's yeah. about the process yeah. for the fight of freedom and democracy, right? Yeah, and if we don't stand up for our country, we cannot hope other country to help us. Yeah. So we have to stand up at first. Taiwan knows this is all about resisting China's might. And one way to do that is to show that the population is prepared. This weekend, Zhou has travelled up to the capital Taipei to observe a drill organised by an NGO called Forward Alliance. They've trained thousands of civilian responders who can mobilise if there's a disaster, ranging from a typhoon or earthquake to the biggest existential threat facing Taiwan, war with China. For Joe, seeing training on this scale with hundreds of attendees and so well resourced is reassuring. The race to prepare in Taiwan is as much about technology as it is about manpower. I'm meeting a toy maker that's helping to develop kit for the army. It looks like a toy, and that's the point. This was a famous toy company once upon a time making remote control cars. But Taiwan has looked at Ukraine and realized that these sorts of things could be crucial for defense. This surveillance drone has advanced AI. It can lock on and track moving targets like this high-speed train. Drones are a key tool in asymmetrical warfare but the problem is Taiwan has just hundreds of them compared to China's tens of thousands. The government has asked Thunder Tiger and other commercial companies to join its national drone team and develop models for the military. Do you think Taiwan can keep up technologically? I believe so. Taiwan be making the uh, most advanced uh, commercial chips for uh, all the industry worldwide. But uh, now the Taiwanese government and Taiwanese company and Taiwanese people are aware that they should do uh, something for themselves to protect themselves. You're going to need a lot of these. Then. Yes. Yes, we need a not, our government should not only purchase 3,000, they should purchase 30,000. For you, is this just a commercial decision um, to make money for your shareholders, or is this about national defense? From our childhood, we've been loving flying uh, these uh, airplanes and drones and helicopters. So it's a fantastic a dream job for us. We can make money for ourselves, and we can also make something which is meaningful to our country. On every level of Taiwanese society, there are people gearing up for war. And at the country's largest defense expo, it all looks very slick. Taiwan's biggest military suppliers are here at this expo, but there's something else going on, which is the prepper culture of replica weapons and civil militia. The lines between these two worlds are really starting to blur. Taiwan's military has been accused of being on the back foot, with too few soldiers and weapons and an insufficient conscription program. But does it really need the preppers' help to beat China's army, the PLA? I've come to the country's main defense think tank to ask. Dr. Shen, hello, Krishnan Guru Murthy, hello. Thank you very much indeed for having us. If you compare numbers, how can Taiwan ever defeat the Chinese army? 
okay, you can see, yeah, the PLA had two million, but how many tools he can use in Taiwan Street? I think maybe 300,000 or 400,000. We can use the urban warfare and maybe big city warfare. You seem very certain yeah. that military action is coming. Yeah. Is, is this what the Taiwanese military establishment thinks? Uh, yes. But Joe Biden yes. has said he will not allow it. Yeah, yeah. We know that the United States will intervene in Taiwan Strait conflict. But we don't know which way or which model. Maybe the model like uh, Ukraine. But between Ukraine and the United States, they don't have uh, the so-called like, uh, Taiwan Relations Act. So the truth is that Taiwan is relying on the United States. Of course, right now, yeah. So wh what do you think of the preppers? Yeah. The civilians yes. who are preparing for war? If people choose to stay in Taiwan, it means that they want to prepare or want to defend their own prosperity, their life, and their country. It's useful. If people where the fighting is very high, yeah, a any weapon system can use, they will use. China may see Taiwan as its own province to be reclaimed, but Taiwan has enjoyed years of democratic freedoms and won't give them up easily. What preppers like Joe fear losing is quite hard to define precisely, but you get a sense of it if you come here to one of Taiwan's famous night markets. It's really relaxed. Joe and her wife can come here and they don't feel watched. They can do what they want, they can say what they want, and it's that freedom they want to hold on to. China's lack of marriage equality is one obvious threat to Joe. Why do you love your country? People in here, is, uh, they can be free in thought, in lifestyle, even in art. But in China, they have to... Um, Whatever happens to Taiwan in the future, whether it's one country, two systems, whether it's a Chinese takeover, what will your identity be? Still Taiwanese, even even wars happen, even if it's one country, two systems, I'm still Taiwanese. Taiwan has long hoped to avoid war with China by treading carefully. But as Beijing gets bolder, so too do the preppers. This island nation is gaining the confidence to push back.